Hi, I'm Justin Boyd. Hi, I'm George Luna. I'm Brittany Pacheco. And I'm Ragnarok. <laughs> and we are the Watchers in the Basement. Welcome to another edition of the Watchers in the Basement. We are here today to discuss the second episode of Marvel Studios' uh, Loki series. The title of the episode is The Variant. And I think, uh, I think we found out who the variant is or was, or I mean, Loki's a variant, right? This, I gotta say guys, like I watched this episode and I like the show a lot, but I don't understand it. I, I'm like, <laughs> I, 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 I need to spend more time with this, uh, show, or maybe I need to like watch all these like Easter egg videos or whatever literature is available. Maybe the what comics. Are you, what are you not understanding? Maybe we can help you here yeah i I don't know like i'm just kind of like i'm enjoying it but you know honestly i think what it is i don't want to have to think too hard i (laughs) like like i kind of just want like rock'em sock'em robots with marvel characters i just want to like watch two kids take action figures and just smash them together that's all i'm looking for right now it's just i'm looking for simpler times in my life uh that's funny but uh George, what did you think about the episode? Because obviously you have a better hand. It was good. Uh, we learned quite a bit this episode. Uh, the story that I like the pace that it's going at. It definitely it was not slow. Like it, it jumped into it right right away, and I think it's going to keep doing that because there's only six episodes. So I like that they introduced the villain, quote unquote. But I don't think that's going to be the villain and the main villain that we we see in the end or season finale you know uh but no it was it was a really solid episode i think after watching the second episode I, it's already my favorite series compared to the other two shows at first it, it uh Cap- captain america and the winter soldier was definitely up there but uh i think it's just it's blown out of the water now and my it definitely opinion. like yeah, it definitely feels like higher production value. Oh yeah, it's like a movie, man. It's it's yeah. crazy. And fifty-four minute episodes is like, it, it's great. And you know, in this episode, a lot of the episode was you know like two people talking to each other, and mostly it was Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston, and they're just so good. I mean, yeah. they're so good those characters, and it's and that's almost why like part of why like I just kind of enjoy watching the show, and I don't really, I'm I'm not really fully invested in the whole like time travel stuff because all that stuff kind of gets yes i agree with you, you know lost in the sauce like it's just it's confusing and it's you know i don't I am, i'm not i'm just not ready for that part of this show <laughs> i'm surprised how much i'm enjoying owen wilson's character like in this in this show like he, he's great I, I i don't i don't know what i thought like i, I was kind of skeptical coming in like watching him in this kind of role like i, I don't know i thought yeah, he wouldn't th- Cause I always see him in these like silly ass movies, like wedding crashes and all these like rom coms, like stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Wow. Nice. There we yeah. go. There we go. <laughs> Justin does it good. He does. <laughs> he does. I can't do it right now though. I. Oh. Brittany stole my thunder. So, uh, speaking wow. of thunder, let's transition to the God of Thunder's brother. Look at that transition. Like what a, <laughs> like. I'm playing in transition like the Warriors, like circa like three or four years ago. Just like perfect fast break, pulling up for threes. <laughs> now, now in the NBA, everybody shoots threes. Like they once they cross half court, it's like fair game. Like if you're the first guy past half court, you're putting it up. But uh, anyway, let's go to Brittany. Brittany, what'd you think about the episode? I've watched both of these episodes twice thus far, just in the same day or within like the same couple of hours just because it's like it's like watching a movie just like George said that this production is so well done and the fact that we only have six episodes for this season I'm hoping we're going to get an additional season because damn there is a lot to cover I feel in just six episodes so I'm hoping that this will continue on past this first season but you know these little easter eggs that um I'll just kind of throw here and there throughout this pod, I I think are just so well done. I think Marvel has done such an incredible job of telling a story, but also throwing it back to different movies that we've seen before, stuff that you might not have noticed before. And 
I don't know, Marvel, I'll say this again, has just done an incredible job with the storylines, the character development. I, I feel like with Loki, I love him even more than I did just in the movies, right? So this episode, it, it was a little confusing, especially talking about the timeline and things like that. But after watching it the second time, I think I have a better grasp about what we're dealing with, excuse me, what we're dealing with. And, you know, bravo. It's, I think it's just a really well done show overall. Frank, your thoughts. I mean, I'm kind of just echoing what, what everybody's saying. Like, as far as production value, man, it, I feel like I'm watching um, an MCU movie in the box office every 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 Wednesday morning. It's it's exquisite, and it's weird because, like, I mean, I know I know this is the Tom Hiddleston before all the other Thor and Avenger movies and all that, but like, he really acts like the acting chops that he has. And like when he sees things that are like in the future that we've already seen, like like his 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 acting chops were like you know showing a little bit of emotion, the, you know the, the the glimmer of tear in his eye, like the shock, like dude, I'm like man, this is like some Oscar worthy type of shit right here. Like he, like it's like I'm 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 reliving the moments that he hasn't seen yet that I've already seen. That makes sense. And um, you know, I, and like George said, man, I was kind of worried about Owen Wilson at first. Um, his voice sounds the same in every movie, but like, <laughs> but like um. In this in this film, like in this show, I feel like Owen and Tom, their 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 comedic timing, the chemistry, they have great synergy together, and um, and you know I I want to see more more seasons of this show. Um, I don't know where they can take it after the show's over with, but um, they need to find a way to bring back Loki um, in the MCU because that guy can act his ass off, man, and the writing so far. I had I, I had a lot of I had a lot of uh, concerns in the beginning in episode one. They it calmed me down a little bit in episode two, and uh, so I, I hope that they they keep building on this on this on this ride and and see what happens in, in the season finale coming up in the next five weeks or four weeks. So I want to say real fast, Frank, before we continue, the reason for Tom and Owen's you know on screen chemistry and how it why it works is because they've they've filmed before together. I think it was in. Midnight in Paris, um, if I'm not mistaken. So they've they've acted, you know, together before, and you know they're good friends, and so it just it works. Obviously, it, the the banter between the two is just it's it's great, and yeah. So there's your little tidbit. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, I, I could tell it, it's. I mean, I haven't seen that movie before, but like they they really transcend the experience they working together previously into this in this project, and it's, it's been great. I I don't. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I don't know. There's nothing more I can say about about this, about Tom. He, he just, he, he kicks ass. Yeah, and I, and I think that um, this is a series that I, I also hope gets a second season because I don't know that we're going to see Tom Hiddleston's Loki back in the movies, you know, just because, you know, he's, his character obviously dies in Endgame. And obviously this is a, you know, this is a 2012 version of Loki. And of course you can play with time and with comic books, you can kind of make anything possible, but there is kind of a thing with Marvel that they've has kind of started where they're, they're transitioning away from the original actors, you know, like obviously uh, Chris Evans is gone. Robert Downey Jr. is gone. I don't know this Thor and love and thunder might be Chris Hemsworth's final movie is Thor. I don't know that. I'm just guessing it could be, Obviously, Scarlett Johansson, I would assume that Black Widow is her last movie. So all these mm -hmm. older characters, they're, I think, it looks like they're going to be moving on. And with this Loki series, it looks like with, with how the episode ended, it looks like Loki might be in the MCU, but it might not be the Tom Hiddleston version is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. So, mm -hmm. But in the meantime, hopefully they have enough story to where they can go a couple seasons with the show. Cause it's, it's so phenomenal. And he's so great at that character. Like I said last week, like it's, I really, I, I mean, as much as I love like Iron Man and Captain America, like I think low, I think play, I think Hiddleston plays his character better than everybody else does. Like, I just, I almost feel like when I see him, I expect him to be Loki. I don't even think of him as Tom Hiddleston. I've only seen him in a couple of their movies, you know, besides the, the Marvel movies. So mm -hmm. he's just so good. There's that character. And it's such a, it's such a creative, like he's the anti-hero, 
I don't know. It's such a perfect mixture of like charisma and his acting talent. And yeah, mm -hmm. I definitely want to see more of it. I will say too that Tom Hiddleston actually had to give the writers of Loki a workshop about Loki and, and how he yeah. works and that kind of thing. So yeah, Tom Hiddleston for sure has really embodied the character of Loki. It's kind of like, we've said this before about different actors associating with certain characters, but the best one that I can relate to would be Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow, because that is one thing that Johnny Depp said that if for the rest of his life, he could play one role, it would be that of Jack Sparrow. And I kind of would think Tom Hiddleston might feel the same way just because he has a lot of fun being the God of mischief. Yeah, I would hope so. I, and also like, I mean, I'm sure his paycheck is very nice. I'm sure he's, <laughs> you know, and it's only gotten better probably over the years, but you know, Brittany, you brought up an interesting, interesting point before we get to the episode itself. You talked about the writer of this, of a Loki mm -hmm. and the writer's name is Michael Waldron. And, and he is very much involved in the MCU going forward and also in another big property. He is, uh, so not only is he writing, or did he write Loki? He's, he, he wrote the script for the new Doctor Strange movie. Yay. He's also working on the script for the Kevin Feige Star Wars movie. Ah. So. Very immersed. This guy, yeah, he's very entrenched in uh, in the Walt Disney Company. So I think uh, that, that also gives me hope that maybe they might do more than one season. Just because it seems like this guy has, has some pull there. So Fingers crossed, y'all. Come on. Fingers crossed. I will say this. I will say this in all seriousness. Um. Taylor Swift fucked up by bringing up the Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> that, like, they could have made some Loki babies. They could have further the line. I bet when she watches Loki, she's like, fuck. I didn't know this motherfucker was so goddamn talented. Mm -hmm. Hey, like, she, she and I were born in the same year. So, Tom, if you're ever watching this, <laughs> I'm not available, but I can be for you. Oh so. <laughs> John's watching this episode. <laughs> Tom doesn't watch this. <laughs> Taylor Smith have, had a pretty good run there for a while. She had, uh, uh, what's his name? Jake Gyllenhaal was one of her guys. Uh, oh, is she fucking like all the Marvel, you know, actors? What the hell? Like, I don't know, but she had a, it was like a lot of people. And, and then like, of course she would like write about them in her songs. Yeah. But yeah. So one of the Jonas Brothers too, right? Or two of the yeah. Jonas Brothers or all three? I don't know. All three. <laughs> I think the whole Jonas family got a shot. I think it was <laughs> just God. like. And Probably Sophie Turner we're, too. We're not slut shaming here. We're, we're giving we're giving Taylor props for doing what she's yeah. doing. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm not. Yeah, nothing against her. Yeah. I just I, she's I mean, made she, a career about you know you know writing about her love life. Like, all right, you know, go go for it. Yeah, John she's Mayer. Like, yeah, John no, but, Mayer. Frank, I was about to say she's like the female version of John Mayer, but I think she was actually with John Mayer also because John yeah. Mayer went through everybody you can think of, like from Jennifer Aniston to. To Taylor Swift, which that's a huge eight. That's like a 25 year age gap. Yeah, Britney right. Spears. Uh, yeah. What was the other? I forgot other about that one. Like Katy Perry. Like, mm -hmm. he, 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 he's made the Frank. eight a couple of times. <laughs> made the eight. Yeah, Frank. You, <laughs> you said John fucking Mayer, and it made me think of Emma Stone in that Justin Timberlake movie when oh, she breaks up with Fred's Benefits. She's like, John fucking Mayer. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Let's move on to talk about Loki, y'all. Let's talk <laughs> okay. about the episode. Okay, so the episode opens in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, 1985 at a Ren Fest, uh, Renaissance Festival. Um, just first off, Oshkosh, Wisconsin. I, I'm, I'm not sure if this is where our friend Drew lives, but shout out to Drew in Wisconsin. Uh, uh, yes. You got another reference? It was referenced also in uh, the Justice League movie where uh, the the Gotham City oh, yeah. team is playing Wisconsin. So anyway, yep. your second shout out uh, this year. So hey, good for you. <laughs> um, what did y'all think about the open of this episode? About, uh, I mean, obviously, <clears throat> you're, it's like a time travel thing. Did, did uh, anyone catch that, like the, the Agatha, Agatha lady that looked just like her? And she, she was did. unfazed by the time people at all. Like, she saw them come through the port or everything unfazed by it i'm not sure if she saw them come through the portal but she yeah, did she obviously did. well i mean but she didn't you know take notice to to their attire and she's just like but it was kind of weird that she did say like hey some of us need this or that kind of thing like are we talking about the fair in general the need to cosplay kind of thing like i, I wasn't quite sure what she was yeah, referencing i guess i didn't i didn't notice the agatha resemblance 
I, I mean, did. Dude, she for looks sure. just like I her. Didn't yeah, she, she looks did. just like her. Mm hmm. Is that like that all along, y'all? Yeah. And the <laughs> Renaissance, like, it would have been like at the time that she was like alive at that time. <laughs> so, I think it's not quite, but yeah. Look at there's There's a video on it. It was. Oh, the all right. Fine. Be like that. Yeah. Be like that. <laughs> I yeah, I mean, it was 19, 1985. So, still alive. <laughs> Uh, I know one so, of us was alive for sure. Well, depending when someone else was being born. So, right? Right. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was being born. I was being okay. born. <laughs> February of that year. There you go. So from there, <laughs> let's see. What, what, what happens next in this episode? It goes to... So the we do see that we've got some commanders from the TVA who are there to investigate, you know, this Nexus event what have you and they go into this tent where it's basically kind of like an ambush because the variant loki that they're trying to capture enchants uh the commander i think her name is c-20 c20. or c20 yeah. or something like that it's kind of weird that they all have like you know numbers and names like that but anyway so she gets enchanted she starts taking down her fellow team members i think the variant Loki, Loki, Loki. Wow, that was weird. Variant Loki uh, stabs, you know, uh, one of the team members as well, and ends up kidnapping that commander along with the reset charge, and goes through that portal type thing to escape. So that's pretty much what was going on there at the Renfest. I I'm curious as to why a Renfest. You know, that was that was just an interesting choice of of location i enjoy the renaissance festival here in in texas i mean i think it's fun. i, I it's think it's because cool. it's a unique setting it's just you yeah. can get people in costumes and it's it looks cool you know that's fair different so that's well, fair. when it first opened i mean before it said oshkosh i was like are we like going back to the medieval time i mean like because certainly we see you know not not to jump too far ahead but you, you know you're going to uh pompeii in a 79 ad then you're going to the future you're going to haven hills alabama in 2050 so mm -hmm. there's a lot of time travel in this episode yeah mm -hmm. for sure in a quick period of time too yes for sure but that's how we start off this episode with uh one of the commanders being being kidnapped by the loki variant so and then we see loki as a tva worker what what was y'all's uh take on that well, just the fact that, you know, Loki is is having to do training videos. He's yeah. having to learn about what the Nexus is and things like that. And then he gets pulled in by Mobius because of this attack. It's 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 always it's always funny. It doesn't like Loki gets so show shocked how in episode one that the TVA is like pretty much the end all be all of, of existence and a timeline. So it's like he's like, man, my purpose is question. I don't know what my purpose is. And then like in episode two, he goes right back to the same mode of being like this kind of sending asshole God, like this is beneath <laughs> me. I'm not gonna read these books. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go to the library. I'm not gonna, you know, watch these training videos. It's, it's, it's he goes right back to who he is as a person. It's just like, it, again, he just fully encapsulates the extent of his assholeness um, on this show and, and his character. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I think Loki is as scared of the unknown as he is, as he is intrigued. Because he doesn't know, because he's so he's so used to like controlling every situation possible, and I think this is the first time in his three thousand years of living that he does not know what to expect, and he doesn't know how to approach it while being intrigued by the situation at the same time. That's a fair assessment. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Well, the the fact that too the TVA is having well, I won't say the TVA, but Mobius is wanting to rely on Loki in order to find variant Loki and that's not setting well with a lot of these you know field op individuals right uh, they give him that jacket of that says variant on the back that way they know who he is but I do appreciate how he kind of was popping that collar like he's from a 1980s like John Hughes type film like trying to be cool with some swag I don't know I thought that was kind of adorable but anyway um and I wonder but, like with those TVA the ones who are not happy about Loki being a part of it like what's their plan like like what are what like clearly they what they were doing wasn't working <laughs> so like what's right what's and their justin, idea justin not only that every time they they were sent out to go find this variant 
they the whole crew got murdered for it. Exactly. <laughs> right. Wouldn't you be like, hey, maybe we need some new ideas. We need some new people. Like, let's mix it up here. Well, but we do see like in the the briefing with is it B fifteen? She's talking about how you know be on the lookout for the variant Loki. He's taken you know different forms, and they're showing like the different Lokis that I, to my understanding, are taken directly from the comics. We've got like. A, a full blood frost giant loki we've got a, a cyclist loki like a lance armstrong kind of dude yeah strong hulk loki perhaps and mm -hmm. then trickster loki and viking loki so there's different variations of loki and this is like a huge surprise to present day or tva version of, of loki right and but he drops some knowledge on on the tva about how there's a difference between shape shifting and then like Projection. duplication casting and things like that you know they they claim okay the whole sacred timeline the timekeepers you know they created everyone and everything they know all but they don't know the extent of his powers like he has to drop knowledge on about that like what that was so that, a little confusing that is confusing to me so what what does he mean like when he makes th those copies or whatever like because he said I, I didn't understand that shit. It was very confusing. I, I think it's like, like he, he can create a, like a, a an real, illusion of himself. But right? then he said he can make like a molecular, like a true, like what does that mean? But that's that's the illusion. So with the the duplication casting, um, is or one of the two is that there's an external like the outside world perceives this person so if he made himself into a completely different person other than himself that's that's one version of powers but what he's talking about is it's him and his you know actual form it's another facsimile of, of I'll himself give you, i'll give you a classic example from the movies so the so the 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 inner the inner duplication remember remember thor 2 dark world towards the end when Odin is sitting on the is sitting on the the throne, and Thor yes. comes back and is like, "Hey, Father, everything is peaceful now. We're good." Thor walks out, and then Odin changes to Loki. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the that's the that's the inner that's the, that's the, that's the inner um, shape shifting that, that he's talking about. Okay, mm -hmm. the duplication that he's talking about as well. The projection, yeah, mm -hmm. Ragnarok when Thor is in that prison and uh -huh. he thinks Loki's there in real life, but he's right. really not. Okay. Yes. That's the pro that's the projection that he's the, right. the projection that he's talking about. So okay. where he can project out and make it seem like it's an illusion of him being there, but he's right. not really there. And okay. it still keeps within the molecular state that he, you know, but is. can you touch can you touch that illusion of him? No, you no. can't. Remember, yeah. remember throwing okay. through that rock yeah. at him in the yeah, yeah. room? Oh, okay. He's like, yeah. So gotcha. That, that, yeah. That's yeah. what confused me. I wasn't sure. I was like, so he can make like real duplicate copies yeah. of himself or what? So, okay. Gotcha. So, our, so our concern, I think our concern as a group is that you're the TVA, you're supposed to be the the the, the universe greatest, uh, uh, all universes greatest detectives, and you you don't know something that simple, and right. then like and then like you, you're doing the same the same uh, cat chases his tail act of like sending troops to get murdered every every single time to find this version of Loki is like you guys are happy. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, especially when like Loki, much like everyone else, their their entire lives are on these like rolls of tape, right? Or, yeah. or right. you know, film film tape or film reel. So yeah. the question I want to pose to you guys is obviously we've seen the different versions of Loki on the hologram kind of thing, the you know, Frost Giant, Hulk, etc. But where are all these Loki's coming from? You see what I'm saying? Like what, and I'm, I'm gonna read this question that I have here. Cause like the Loki that we know can change shapes for long periods of time, but he's still the same person inside, right? So these are variants that he's not aware of, but they're coming from other dimensions or other time periods or other shenanigans, but like with the Tesseract, like where are all these variants coming from? Because they said that they've been like searching and have encountered different you know, variants of Loki's for quite some time. So again, where are all these Loki variants coming from? So I think, I, I, and this is my theory, I think there are multiple Lokis and multiple timelines all across the, the, all the timelines. But this particular Loki is jumping timelines and creating havoc in, by trying to create other timelines. But okay. so the Frost Giant Loki, the Cyclist Loki, they're in their respective reality or their respective time loop. 
or, or whatever. Okay. And and that one Loki that we that we saw in, in this episode, that's the one Loki that's jumping timelines and creating havoc and trying to create okay, uh, you know all all, the, all these different branches and shit. So okay, I think that's a that's a fair answer. I, to me, that actually yeah. makes some kind of sense. So it's kind of, we it, yeah. Go ahead. It's kind of like how like an end game how. Uh, Tony and Ant Man and Cap, Cap all went back to 2012, and then Cap and Tony mm -hmm. saw a version of themselves in that, yeah. in, right. that in that timeline. It's, it's 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 essentially the same thing. Like all these different timelines, you have different versions of yourself, um, mm -hmm. but you, you don't know of the other versions that are out there in those timelines. If that, if that makes sense. Okay, I, I follow. I'm with you. I follow you. I don't fully fully understand it, but I'm with you. I, I can follow your train of thought. But we will see that they're gonna TVA and Loki are all gonna go back to the Ren Fair, and that Loki is going to stall. You know, Loki is Loki, obviously. He's going to try to waste time because the fact that that Mobius told Loki before, hey, you know, you do your part. I'll get you in front of the timekeeper. So that's like the motivation right there for Loki. So he's going to stall. He's going to waste time and say like, oh, I know what that variant is thinking. That variant wants me, Loki. We need to go warn the timekeepers like immediately, right? You know, that's just being manipulative. And, and Mobius is not to be fooled by by Loki and we finally do see the reset charge happen, right? You know, we finally see what it is that they do and just eliminate anything that I, I guess shouldn't have been there in that timeline. Is it, am I saying that correctly? I think Correct so, because a lot of the stuff stayed, but whatever wasn't supposed to be there or was it there at that time disappears. Right. So so it's not, it's not resetting when those time charges are not resetting what's ever going on there? I think it's resetting to the time they, whenever that variant, the evil Loki got there. Got there. Mm -hmm. And so before that, so then it just continues out. Okay. Right. As if it never happened. Yes. Presumably. So. Yeah. And so my, my other question is, so with 2012 Loki, the main character being, getting caught once he, once he escaped from, from, you know, going to Asgard, the TVA sp specifically get him because of what this other Loki was doing? Yes. Well, no, 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 they picked him up because of the Tesseract. They're using yeah. him for to try and figure out who this Loki variant is. So I guess, I guess my question, and this is this is why I'm, I'm so confused by the TVA and like their lack of like, lack of like awareness. If you, if this other Loki is, is, is creating all this havoc and this in the 2012 Loki you, you apprehend why why did why did it go down to Morbius thinking like you know what we have this Loki let's go find the other Loki why didn't the TVA or the or the, the the three timekeepers think of that think of that nature yeah well I think because of the fact that the 2012 Loki had not deviated the, mm -hmm. the at the time it, it the Loki all that was supposed to happen to Loki happened right we saw that all the way from Avengers all the way to to end game when when Thanos killed him so that's why they couldn't like you know scoop him up and be like hey we need you to come help us you know get this other Loki does that make mm -hmm. sense so gotcha. it wasn't until he deviated that that couldn't have been a possibility gotcha. but, couldn't you go back to like a timeline before the deviation and stop him there but wouldn't that alter his that would have altered like his his, his, his timeline. future because mm -hmm. if he would have found out about the TVA and all this stuff and how yeah. his life ended then he'd be like yeah fuck this so kind of, kind of like now, but now his future is kind of like unwritten because he knows how everything ends. Mm -hmm. So he like, what's going to happen to him? Right. Right. So all that he's got going for him right now is working for the TVA. Now we, we will see Mobius um, talk to Judge Renslayer. I think that's her name. The one that yep. Frank's got a crush on. Mobius and Renslayer. yeah, she, uh, I, are they flirting? Or is like Mobius flirting with her? I mean, there he he. It yeah. seems like he's got a little crush on her or something. He's Some sort of affection. He's definitely flirting with her. Yeah, they have history, I think. Yeah, but because that, we don't. That... I was gonna say because we don't know how like time moves within the TVA. We don't know how long these people have been in existence and yeah. and what have you. It just seemed like like he's very much attracted to her in some kind of fashion, but maybe she doesn't necessarily feel the same way there's a lot more to her character than meets the eye at this time i mean i know about the whole kang you know situation but i think yeah. there's still something more to this uh renslayer than than what we're seeing right now 
and you know in the comics she's married to Kane the Conqueror and if mm-hmm. you notice they lingered for a while on that one timekeeper that yeah. looks like what yes. like Kane the Conqueror looks like so yes my question is 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 he one of the timekeepers because obviously that I mean we know the timekeepers are going to be evil yeah you know mm-hmm. I don't know I don't know either I, I was going to nah, say because I never did because I, I thought he, he controlled the, like in the comic, comic books, he tr- controlled the timekeepers, like kind of like he was playing them and controlling them somehow. Mm-hmm. And he ended up like being the one that was in control of all that stuff. Yeah, it's interesting because that character is has been cast for the uh, Ant-Man 3. Ant-Man yeah. Quantumania, I believe mm-hmm. is what it's called. I wouldn't be surprised if he shows up in this show. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised either. The the actor who plays him, that it's that Jonathan Majors, he mm-hmm. was recently quoted. Someone asked him about Loki, and he said, "I don't know what you're talking about." But <laughs> you sure. know, who knows? We'll, we'll we've sure. we've theorized before, especially with Wandavision. Yeah, uh, I'm not I'm not trying to go that deep. But, but you know, in this case, it would make a it lot would of make sense. sense. It, yeah. it would because make a lot because of sense. it's a character that I mean the stuff I just said about him, I, I've just heard recently or I've looked it up right. recently. So I don't, I don't have any kind of history with this character. And I yeah. think most people are like me or even have less understanding of, of the MCU and Marvel. So it would make sense to introduce him considering mm-hmm. you have a facsimile of him, like the statue, right? You yeah. have his, I don't know if, I don't know if they're, if they're currently married in the storyline or if they will be married because her, yeah. her name is what is it like Ramona? Or Ramina Renslayer. Ramina it's a Renslayer. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. It's the alliteration. You know, it's the classic Peter Parker, you know, mm-hmm. kind of name yeah. that we love in uh, comic books. But uh, yeah, well, go ahead, Brittany. And while talking about the timekeeper, we do find out that Mobius actually has never met any of the head bosses. And all that he knows is through Ren Slayer. And that's why I'm saying, like, I think there's a lot more to her than meets the eye. I think I read recently somewhere that people are theorizing that maybe she herself is one of the timekeepers, or, you know, maybe she does that whole um, double, uh, the casting thing. Like she, she's portraying someone she really isn't. I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to read too, too much into it, but the fact that Mobius is such a believer in the TVA and the timekeepers, but he's never met them himself is kind of, you know, questionable, right? Because go ahead. I, I think it's just because they they made them or like they're either that or they're being controlled and they believe all this stuff. That's that you was know? gonna be my next suggestion because a lot of these people don't remember any like how did this guy not know what a fish was? Like did he not grow right. up? Like that's right. they're made they were created or brainwashed to do this exactly like that's their job and that's it they don't focus on anything else exactly and 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 because we're kind of on this topic we do see a conversation between mobius and loki about how they kind of each like contradict each other in a way i mean loki thinks that mobius is intelligent he's like you know you're so into- how do you believe all of this yeah. like and then Mobius throws it back on Loki. Like, you know, you say that you're of the Odenheim, you were raised by Odin, and you, you know, like, you, you just don't know. You don't know what's real and what isn't. I, I, thought, so. I thought you were going to talk about their love for jet skis. I was going to get there. I was going to say for sure that Mobius has a love for the 90s. Like, there's a lot of 90s, like, type references in the show. I, I mean, nothing that I remember naturally because I'm a child. You know, I just, I, was a child. I, want, I want to see... <laughs> I want to see Morbius uh, be able to ride a jet ski in one of these. Right. Uh, go back on a timeline and be able to do that. If he's going to die, like, I hope that's how he dies <laughs> on a jet ski. Let him have some fun in his life, y'all. Come on. No, just it's pretty just dark. Kidding. It's a dark turn. Sorry. I'm a dark person. My soul is a very dark soul. Anyway, <laughs> so as punishment for the stunt that Loki pulled, Mobius tells loki that hey i know you plan to overthrow the tva like you know you think you're 10 steps ahead you're really not so as punishment you're going to read all these case files about the variant and i thought that scene in the library whatever i guess it's a library kind of thing was kind of funny with he's like oh no you know you you mean to tell me that there's another attack blah blah blah, and then he gets shushed like (laughs) i don't know i just thought that was quite clever but the fact that when he reads Ragnarok, you see that emotion 
come out of him. Like he actually learns that Asgard, his home is destroyed. And the fact that turns into a actual clue in order to find the variant, you know, apocalypse equals zero variance energy. Like Loki's brilliant y'all like, let's just give it to him. He's smart as fuck. But uh, this is, this is something I wanted to ask y'all is so the, he, he, you're right. He, because he looks at the Ragnarok file, he determines that the ultimate place for a variant to hide would be to hide within a place where an apocalypse happens. Right. But like yeah. the definition of an apocalypse, I thought apocalypse was like the end of time. Cause they, they reference like floods and it's like, we have floods. We're probably gonna have a flood here this weekend. You know, like it's not, a, <laughs> it's not an apocalypse. You know what I mean? Like it was a very weird, like, I mean, yes, a volcano erupting in Pompeii, that's definitely a natural disaster, I guess I would say. But I, but to me, the use of apocalypse didn't really make sense when it was like just natural disasters. You know, what y'all think about that? Yeah, that's not, Pompeii yeah. is not global, it's not global extinction. Right. Like global extinction is like the end of the dinosaurs. That's a global, that's a global right. extinction. Like Pompeii and like a hurricane in 2050 in Alabama, that's not, an, that's not an apocalypse. And then I guess the, my other confusion with this ideology is that no matter what you do with an apocalyptic timeline, you can't you can't avoid the you can't avoid uh, uh, I guess a, a apocalyptic event or or a, a, right. a, a, a event of that nature. Right. But don't they kind of do it in Ragnarok when they save the people? Like like when when Thor's reading the file, it's saying that everybody died, which is not true. Like it said, nine nine thousand people died. Nine thousand people died. Yeah, it said mm -hmm. the exact number of how many people. Yeah, 9, it did. So is it really an is it really is it really an apocalypse? If it's not, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. so like I, it, I, it I agree ended. With it ended the home world. Okay, like the the people no longer lived or dwelled in in the place that was once Asgard, right? But Odin right. said, Asgard is not a place, Asgard is a people. So as long as the people live, you know, they're never, they're never without Asgard, right? So I, I agree the, the point that you guys are making about apocalypse is not being used correctly in a way. Yeah. I, I think the point is that they're trying to make is the end of a civilization, you know, that with the theory of Pompeii. The fact that no new timeline branch could be created because all evidence would be destroyed in that apocalypse. Like that apocalypse was going to, you know, apocalypse in, in quotes, it was going to happen regardless. Hence why when they went to Pompeii, Loki did all that he did and, and what have you. And, you know, Mount Vesuvius still erupted and that was the end of so, you know, Pompeii. So let me ask you this question. So let's say Loki and Morbus get there two weeks earlier in Pompeii. They warn the people, the people look. That's different. That'd be different. That's hey. different. But that's still, but from the definition of the show, that's still a global, that's, that's still an apocalyptic event. But you warn you kinda, them. That you kind of sidestep by saving the majority of the people. But you warn them. Yeah, that that would have created a new the, branch. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, a, a, new that's branch. a branch. Yeah. yeah. That's why they went, that's why they went at the time it was in, in 79 AD when when Mount Vesuvius was about to erupt because Loki said, I can do whatever I want. He freed the goats and he warned the people in Latin, right. by the way, Tom Hiddleston actually learned Latin while he was at Cambridge. So that was legit. Um, <laughs> but the fact that, you know, he freed the goats, he warned the people and said, you know, this is what it is. And they were kind of like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then it, it, the Mount Vesuvius started erupting. It, it didn't matter that he warned them because the fact that that was still going to happen. And they're now, still had he, all going to die. Exactly. Had he gone two weeks before, Frank, like what you're, you're suggesting, and warned them, that would have created like a whole new branch and that would have deviated what was supposed to happen. But, but, but doesn't, that, doesn't that contradict your, their very own argument about, about changing the ine inevitable when it comes oh. to apocalyptic events? Because mm -mm. no one, no one got away. No one was able to get away, even though he right. warned right when it was going to happen. No one's going to be able to escape a fucking super volcano like that. Everyone if, died. If he had gone two weeks before and said, "Hey, this volcano is going to erupt," that mm -hmm. would have given them plenty of time to leave, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't. They would have survived mm -hmm. if their timeline destination was to be killed by Mount Vesuvius eruption. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. There you go. I'm smart as fuck, y'all. No, I'm just kidding. Um, how, do, how does the variant survive in those scenarios? No, no, mean? no. It's not the actual variant. There's no variants. There's a difference. So the variant as a person or as right. Loki can hide there and do whatever because, again, all evidence is going to be destroyed, you know, once that natural disaster happens. So the variants and energy, what they were referring to is is by Loki freeing the goats and warning the people right before Mount Vesuvius erupts, did that create a new branch? It didn't. That's the zero variance change that they were talking about. Yeah. But but if Loki and Moses would have stayed there during Pompeii, they would have died, right? Yeah, for sure. Probably. Probably. I think that's I think that's what Justin was saying. Like that was his question. Is like how they oh, stay. Yeah. They have yeah. they have to portal out. They have to be able to time mm. travel and leave. If not, right. they would die too. Right. Sorry, I didn't understand your question. My bad. Yeah. No, okay. that's okay. Time travel is just confusing for me. That's why, like, it I is. mean, I, like I said, I really enjoyed the episode. And I enjoyed the actors and all, everything about it, but I just like, like my eyes kind of gloss over whenever it's all this like time travel stuff because I just like, you yeah. know, it's it's needlessly confusing. I think so. It is. It is, but I think they're still doing it. Marvel is doing a decent job trying to, you know, explain it. Obviously, the the poor metaphor with the salad and the salt yeah. and pepper and the milk or whatever the hell that stuff was mm -hmm. that was kind of funny but i i still full i i think i do understand now what the whole timeline and the nexus and all i i have a better understanding of of that now so yeah now that yeah. they've tested this theory loki and mobius will search for naturally occurring apocalypses as we're going to put it mm -hmm. and try to you know pinpoint where they're going to find the Loki variant and the, what's it called? Kablooey. Kablooey. Such a funny name. So they remember, or Mobius remembers about the Kablooey candy and it's like, okay, well, let's, you know, cross-reference when that was in existence to a natural disaster and they come down to Alabama 2050. Right. So I do want to say in terms of an Easter egg, that rocks cart store, mm -hmm kind of was referenced in the first iron man it was rocks con so it's kind of like i guess like a big corporation that just yeah you know, created it's, a store. Ro it's rocks on is the rocks corporation on. it's a it's an inner it's like an evil corporation in marvel um if if anybody out there has played the spider-man miles morales video game rocks on is in that game um wow. i don't know a ton about it but i do know it's like an evil corporation that kind of pops up here and there in marvel uh, mm -hmm. comic stuff so. it does it does so they travel uh to to 2050 and what is it haven hills alabama there's a hurricane that's about to happen probably gonna happen when you know in this near future for us over here in the third coast um <laughs> thundering outside my apartment right now i keep having to hit Damn. the mute button because it's uh, oh really Damn. yeah yeah it's 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 I, I sprinkling it it's sprinkling over here but it's it's so weird because like the sun's still out. People are still like, I live across the street from a park and people are outside of the park and it's thundering <laughs> and raining. And it just, it's kind of weird. It's getting dark in here. So uh, it's anyway, all quiet over here. Yeah. Continue. So um, with the team, you know, and Loki, he uses his magic for the first time because they're walking obviously in rain and he uses his magic, which I thought was kind of cool. Just a quick, you know, tilt of the head and he's dry, but Obviously, B-15 doesn't trust Loki to be with Mobius, so she's like, hey, he's with me. Y'all go search elsewhere. And Mobius does find the kidnapped C-20. Uh, and she's freaking out. She's she's keeps saying, like, it's all real, it's all real, which I don't fully understand what she was referring to. Did y'all have any idea about that? Like, I what she meant theory. by... You have a theory. Okay, share your theory yeah. with, with us. I think that the Lady Loki, the variant Loki, showed her like the truth of like the TVA and like that they're not great, that it's either evil or someone's controlling them or the timekeepers don't even fucking exist. And she's oh. like, oh no, it's all real. It's all real. Like, I think she showed her, showed her like the truth of what's happening behind the scenes with them. Okay. That's fair. Cause yeah, she kept repeating that over and over and over again. And, and she tells Mobius that she revealed the location of the timekeepers. So it seems that 
variant Loki or Lady Loki, as you've revealed, um, is probably wanting to destroy the timekeepers or just, you know, life in general. I don't know. It's, it, we do see Loki come across an enchanted shopper shopping for azaleas during a hurricane. Uh, I just want to say that, Frank, did you recognize that guy? He's from Atlanta. He, he played. Is? He played the guy that was. He, he was like the club manager that was dodging Ern. That was showing them and that painting him, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. that is that dude. That was okay. him. That was that guy. That was funny. <laughs> oh, I've never watched Atlanta, but that's funny. I didn't recognize yeah, him. That, it was that guy. I was like, hey, I know that guy. That's the, the club manager that was dodging him the whole time. Yeah, great <laughs> recognition skills, man. Because I, I didn't funny. recognize him. No, yeah, I started laughing when I saw him. That's funny. But this shopper is enchanted by, you know, variant Loki, mm -hmm. and then eventually shifts power to B15. And let me just say, with these actors who have to embody, you know, the the variant Loki, they all did such a badass job, you know, just playing along and and, and getting that persona just down. Because especially with with B15, you know, she doesn't like Loki, it seems, and she's kind of like a hard ass. But then she just plays it up like, oh, you know, you're the one that they sent to to get me. And, you know, if anything, I'm not you, you're me. And then she's like, you know, smile. And I don't know, it's just it was really well done. And then we see that's Stork a huge role. Yeah, for those people, exactly. For those like the extras like that. That's a huge role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, and with, like, that's pretty cool. And with store clerk Randy, I thought he was just perfect you know just kind of that you know bullshit I, of of eh, whatever kind of kind but of see feel. i he was really good but i knew once when it was randy and the way the person the actor acted i knew the reveal was going to be a female character there was mm. something about the way he acted that was kind of female you know what i'm saying like it was yeah. very like there was a little bit of sass where it, like you i didn't think that like because men were, can't be sassy no, no, men can be, but like, I just, I was like, you're sassy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I heart you. Fair, fair point. Fair point. Fair point. Um, yeah. Um, okay. I'm done. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you no, checkmated. but seriously. You checkmated me. It's over. Game over. Yes. Oh, yeah. I don't even know how to play chess, but yes. Um, no, but seriously, all these actors, all the way up to like the trucker dude, the big dude that, you know, fights Loki. They all did such a great job, you know, just portraying that character. I mean, it was just, it was so well done. I was wondering, like, how much longer are we going to see the trucker or Randy or these characters? I, I was like, it's, I was, I was like anticipating the reveal. Let's get to the who yeah. the person is because Loki keeps calling out, like, hey, show yourself, you know, like, and I, I was looking forward to finding out who, who or, you know, what they're. Yeah. Right. I was not surprised when it was a female Loki. I, I think I talked to Frank about it. I was like, it's going to be, yeah. it, it was going to be a female. So I already knew that. that shit, actually. Yeah, yeah, I already knew that. The the actress that plays uh, Lady Loki, or at least that's what we're calling her now, the variant, her name is Sophia DiMartino. DiMartino. Are, are y'all familiar with her at all? I looked her up quickly. I didn't, none of her credits really kind of rang a she's, bell for me. She's, um, I think, more famous in probably Britain. I yeah. know she's done a lot of work. Um, over there in in different British movies, but no, I'm not I'm not particularly familiar with her work. Because whenever there was a reveal, I was expecting it to be somebody that I was familiar with or I'd recognize because that's a pretty big role. I mean, like mm -hmm. a lot of people are watching the show. And we we didn't mention this earlier, but just like how Falcon and the Winter Soldier topped WandaVision for the first episode views, Loki topped Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So each Marvel show. When the new one comes out, it gets more viewers than the previous one. And the previous one does very well, too. So it's like, this is a huge step for her, I would think, in her career, especially here in America, because that's definitely that's a big I, role. And it seems like, now I don't know, maybe it'll, maybe it'll be a short-lived uh, you know, short role, but uh, I was kind of surprised it wasn't somebody we were more familiar with, or at least I was more familiar with. So, I mean... Everyone's got to have a break, you know, when, when yeah. you try to make it in America, of course. Um, I feel like with Tom Hiddleston, it was the role of Loki that made him huge here. I'm still uh, waiting so on mine. Still waiting on mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that reveal was pretty cool because I, I think even from the last 
episode where at the very end we we saw lady loki you know light the field on fire you could just tell that the build was not that of tom hiddleston you know he's like six two you know he's thin what have you she just she just didn't look like you know that same build um i do want to say though before that revealed can we talk about how brits say lieutenant because he says it as lieutenant and i just i don't know i like how they say lieutenant wait say say it again how do they say it they say it like uh lieutenant they throw like a a, like an f sound in there oh i I don't really I didn't notice, notice that. It. No, I didn't notice that. I didn't, yeah, I did. yeah, you know. Well, you've got family in the UK, so I, I kind of expect you to maybe catch Just that. <laughs> but it's interesting. I, I, I wanted, I want to talk to an actual Brit and be like, hey, how come? I mean, they say aluminium for God's sakes for aluminum, That's but so you know, funny. how do, you, how do you get lieutenant from lieutenant? There's no F in there. It's like Kirkendall. There's no R in Kirkendall. Sorry, that's a Houston reference for those who are not familiar with what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Anyway, I digress. Um, so Loki does t- try to make a deal with Variant by saying, hey, I want to overthrow the TVA. Clearly, Variant has no interest in, in that, but we see that all those reset charges are laid out throughout the, the store. And uh, we finally see that Lady Loki will bomb the whole damn place and the sacred timeline. Then we'll see all these branches, you know, go out from the sacred timeline. Did y'all happen to catch any familiar names from that list that was showing up on their little televisions or computer screens? Anything what, stick out? What names? So all these uh, branches yeah. were going to impact. A lot, of the, a lot of the places were places we've seen before. Yeah. Or Ego, Titan like mm-hmm. New York, a lot of places that we've seen. So it's definitely so, changed some stuff. Yeah. So just to name a few, there were Vormir, Asgard, Sakaar, Ego, Titan, New York City, uh, Hala, and more, and much mm-hmm. more. So oh. I think with the, the Vormir thing is very interesting, just because we right. know that right. one of the Infinity Stones, exactly. We know that one of the Infinity Stones is there. I think in one of the trailers, it looked like maybe Loki was on Vormir, possibly with Natasha. Not entirely sure. He could be with Lady Loki there. Who knows? But I think I think that's a bigger possibility. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So that was that was interesting to to see. But we do see the multiple branches, and Lady Loki is going to open that portal to escape. And instead of Loki staying with Mobius he leaves with her as well and scene i definitely would have done the same thing because at, at that moment he had that decision i'm like dude just run just go for right. it that's that's what i totally would have done i would yeah. do that now if there was like a portal i could just jump through and just be out of here i'd do it not nothing against the podcast just like life in general if <laughs> wow. i was like no not, not against the podcast. it's just like if there was a portal right now like outside my window boom gone see ya <laughs> oh goodness I'm yeah out. so yeah, so definitely havoc and chaos is underway. Um, I I enjoyed this episode a lot. Obviously, like I said, I watched it twice. It's a very well done episode, and I'm just bummed out that next week is going to be already at the halfway point for this season. Like, yeah. I need more. Yeah, and I've heard um, Tom Hiddleston. I've I've watched a lot of interviews with him recently, and he he said that like someone asked him like, who's, what, what, what do you think is your best? What's the best episode of Loki? And he said from episode four to five, he said, that's the best uh, grouping of episodes. So um, okay. kind of classic Marvel, even like classic game of Thrones, the, the penultimate episode, the one before yeah. the final is supposed to be really good. So yeah, I, you know, we, we got four more to go. I really hope we have, you know, this kind of leads to other, other adventures for this character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it will. I hope so. I like Loki. He's a great villain, you know, yeah. but is he really a villain or is he a good person? Cause that's one thing he did say to Mobius, you know, not every bad person is bad and not every good person is good, you know? So he, I think he run a game, bro. Uh, for real. Like, yeah. For I real. This is a ploy to just to figure out who, what he's dealing with and, and, and how, he, how he can manipulate the situation. That's like he's done all in all those movies. For sure. So yeah, 
that concludes the uh, review and recap of Loki episode two, The Variant. We'll be back next week to talk about episode three. Um, I don't really have any other. Wait, Wait, what's up? Before we we get off, I want to stick them out real quick. Sure. I have a new I have a new fan in the Gangs of London fraternity. Okay. And mm-hmm. we're gonna make a we're gonna make a we're gonna make it both a fraternity and a sorority. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta I gotta introduce Brittany to the to the to the, to the <laughs> gang, Gangs of London world. Brittany, you saw you seen the first five episodes, right? I have seen the first five episodes of Gangs of London. Correct. Now, before you tell Justin and George, I want you to answer this question. Did I okay. overhype it? It's a difficult question to answer. So, okay. So I will say that the show very much reminds me of like a John Wick kind of, kind of violence, you know, the, the one dude, Elliot, I mean, he's gangster. Okay. I, after watching this last episode, I fully understand his combat skills because, well, anyway, I fully understand it now. Um, Sean the son of the deceased mafia boss is intense. Like, yes, damn, he's intense. He also reminds me he could be a Culkin. Like he could be related to Macaulay Culkin. I don't know why. I think it's the yeah. eyes. It, they're like deep set. He's got like red eyelids. I don't know. And it must be a <laughs> white people thing. Anyway, um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, that's I mean, true. But I mean, I don't know. It, I mean, there is another Culkin. There's Kieran Culkin who's on succession. He's, so, he's yeah. not a Culkin. He, okay. I've, I've done my research he is not he just has that look but anyway no there's actually some game of thrones actors that um are in this show obviously we've talked about michelle fairley she is the mother in this show um salador san is that his name um yeah, he's also he's she, also in the she show she pointed out to me i've watched nine of the ten episodes and she pointed out that one of the main characters is salador san from game of thrones and i, and I didn't know I, could, I didn't know that was him because he's, he's gained weight and he's bald headed in, in this yeah. in this in this in this role. So yeah, so he he was he was the greatest pirate that ever was and that ever will be. He was Davos's friend, so he's in it. Walder Frey had a brief uh, cameo in in the first episode. That that first episode, Frank, I'm going to talk about this is the fact that that whole scene reminded me something out of Kingsman. Just the the cinematography that followed everyone's fight scene how how everything was kind of centralized because that was one thing that they did in kingsman was focus on um taron egerton's character uh Eggsy. he he was always in the center frame when he was fighting and the movement was just crazy there's some creative ass ways these people die jesus oh my god that act scene frank that was very john wick Oh my God, y'all, I, I know you guys don't have AMC. You still need to find a way to check this show out. It's good. The it's really good. Emotion. The act scene in episode four, is that four? Yes, yeah. That that was that was PhD level of how to like, how to like murk somebody with an ax. That, that was a poetry in motion. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I got on top of my couch like Tom Cruise on Oprah and was just like, what the fuck did I just watch? <laughs> some dope ass shit. No, dude. Three times. Dude, the butcher knife. I'm gonna call that dude the butcher. That was fucking sick. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Like I said, the the storyline is good. I, I'm still trying to figure out who's behind all of this, of course. Mm. Um, because every episode it changes. I'm like, well, maybe it's this person, maybe it's this person. But anyway, um, yeah, this show is really cool. So guys, George Frank, uh, not Frank, sorry, Justin. Check it out if you guys get an opportunity to. Everyone else out there that does have it amc check it out it's worth watching like you guys are free this sunday i'm, I'm down to do a uh a, a, a game with a, a watch a watch down in my house it's this sunday got free i'll bring the wine yeah i mean <laughs> right now, man. It's, it, it's, it's really i really want to start doing shows uh podcasts about this show because i think i think this is gonna be amc's golden nugget for the next like five or six years it, it has that kind of like momentum behind it I hope it, it carries. It has, it has a ninety-one percent, has ninety-two percent of Rotten Tomatoes, bro. It's it's going to be around for a while. I hope it carries. It's it's a very good show. It's well paced. I think, with maybe the exception of the first episode, because obviously they're setting up the story, but it's well paced, mm. and the fight scenes are legit. Um, the, the how 
there's moves and then there's counter moves, right? You know, they, they have to be smart about their dealings and things like that. Um, Lale, I was like, girl, what the fuck are you doing? Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so yeah, I think Frank and I are probably going to do, you know, our own pod over Gangs of London for those who are interested. That way you can hear our breakdown of every episode, what we think, you know, Frank's obviously a lot farther along than I am. Um, but yeah, I think that'd be fun to to break down just to bring more content to our podcast. I'm fucking down. <laughs> and I'm down for the watch party. Like I'm down. I will bring the wine. Let's do it. <laughs> for sure. So so what else have y'all been watching lately? Anything? I rewatched and I spent way too much time watching it. Uh, I rewatched em Emily in Paris on Netflix because I needed like a feel good show. I needed something I could, you know, quickly get through. And I, I miss Paris. I'm not going to lie. I, <laughs> I fucking miss Paris. I wish I could travel. <laughs> I really want to get out of here. But um, yeah, that was that was the only thing I've, I've watched. Aside from Gangs of London, of course, um, I actually started reading again. I'm currently reading uh, George Orwell's 1984 because I think it's oh, very nice. appropriate, <laughs> appropriate time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Cool. <sighs> yeah. So that's what I've been up to. What have you been up to, George? I went to the movies for the first time yesterday. Oh, wow. Oh. What'd you see? Quiet Place 2. Okay. It was good. It was, I, it was better than the first one for me. I liked it okay. a lot more. I thought it was pretty good. That's very Did you rare. Watch it, Frank? I think that's rare for a sequel to be better than the first. Yeah, I didn't like. It. I thought honestly, this the the thing that pissed me off about these movies is that they're terrible parents. Their kids probably <laughs> deserve to die, dude, because they're 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 the worst parents in the world. Well, so I mean, surprising. I hope that's in real life. Do, how many kids do they have left? Is it? They have three. So they, okay. they, they, they have three. But the, the one that died, I was not surprised in that the beginning of that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it was a baby. Uh, what you talking about? <laughs> It's, it's, it's like three. <laughs> okay, oh it, think he, about it, Frank. If if you're in a uh, like in this situation, would you let your child walk by himself in yeah. in the back by himself when there's creatures around like this? No, the parents fucked up. I'm saying the kids are gonna die. What, that's what George is saying, though. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. I said that it's the parents' fault. Oh, okay. I thought you said the kid is up to die. Yeah, I mean, no. if you if you're gonna I let them walk it's, free, it's their fault. Oh yeah, yeah. it's yeah. their oh, fault. Man. Their kid died. Totally. <laughs> if if you're gonna let that kid walk free, you gotta duct tape that mouth. Because like that, <laughs> I mean, no, I'm serious. Like, it, I mean, a, that's impossible with kids. I, I I don't have kids, but I know it's impossible to shut them up. I mean, <laughs> muzzle or something. Um, no, nope, yeah. they'll find a way. <laughs> It was it was interesting going back to a movie theater. It was still too packed for my liking, but mm. yeah, it's, it's cool. Okay, well, kudos to you for braving the theater. Yeah, and um, stay healthy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, least, I'm vaccinated, so oh, well, that yeah, helps. Great. That does help. That does help. I know, um, Justin. Are you still planning on going to see Fast Nine in the theater? That'll be next week. I'm, oh yeah, my I'm goodness. Trying to trying to yeah i think so i think i'm gonna get have to do your, it get your tickets ready i think i'm gonna have to do it mm, maybe i'll go to like a thursday like late showing or something i don't know yeah. we'll see we'll see i'm still trying to formulate the plan so i'll probably watch black widow in the theaters honestly really i saw i saw a trailer uh, like the another trailer in the movie theater. Yeah. It, just looked, it looked pretty cool yeah no i'm i'm actually i i had said before i wouldn't pay 30 dollars for you know a premium type of access but i actually might with black widow just because i don't like people i don't want to be around people anymore so <laughs> yeah i think it's actually a pretty good deal because i from what i've read like once you buy it you have it mm -hmm. right no exactly and so you, you can keep yeah. it i yes. think I you can was, keep I it i thought it was a rental no well well, I, if it is a, well, okay, I think what, what the way it works is if you buy it, it'll be on your HP. I mean, your uh, Disney Plus. Yeah. Like in perpetuity. Forever. Yeah. Well, yeah, because eventually they will release it like in right. three months yeah. afterwards. But like, right. But once you pay the premium, then yeah, right. you it's it stays on your list. Like, because like recently, yeah, recently a movie called uh, Raya and the Last Dragon. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. a movie that was a premium access. It now just it dropped on Disney plus this past week or last week or something. Okay. So yeah. um, I just, I mean, for me, it makes sense because I did know what Brittany said. I'm not a big fan of people, but also like I, 
you know, I share my account with family. And so if I buy it, my whole family can watch the movie and not have to like pay, you know, yeah. right. Take four or five kids to see a movie. And then it's like, you know, so I'll, I'll leave this to Frank. If Frank decides to buy it, I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Oh my God. I'm probably, oh. I'm, I'm probably going to buy it because I have like 11 godchildren. Like, yeah. Perfect. I've been, I've been debating <laughs> about, I've been debating about buying the Cruella on, on Disney plus. Cause I, I like Emma stone. I, I love her. I love Emma Thompson. I, I would just want to see, you know, what the movie is, but then it's like, ah, eh, do I really, uh, I'll wait. But yeah, one I, of the, th- I can wait on that one. <laughs> one of the thing I do want to say that I have been watching. I can't believe I neglected to say this. The Handmaid's Tale season finale dropped last night. It's over fucking badass season finale. Oh my God. I already did my audio pod for it. I wrapped up my solo pod series. If you all have not checked that out, please be sure to do so. It is an audio only podcast. So be sure to find it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever it is that you can, you know, download your favorite podcast and be sure to subscribe to the Watchers in the Basement and check out the Handmaid's Tale recap that I did. Oh my God, George, I need Anna to get on this show. I need someone to talk to about this. Oh my She's God. so far behind on it. Ah, I will rewatch it yeah. with her, okay? <laughs> oh, I need someone, like Frank, I, I, I went out on a limb and I, I walked this journey with Frank. I need Anna to walk this journey with me. <laughs> okay. No, but it was, a, it was a great season. The season finale, which is mwah, chef's kiss. Like it was, it was great. So y'all check out the... A recap of The Handmaid's Tale on audio only podcasts. Uh, Frank, what have you been watching? I saw Lucifer last night, uh, the the second half of season five, and I've been re- I've been re- watching True Blood um, again oh. as well. Um, oldie but a goodie. Uh, as far as movies, I haven't seen any movies recently, um, but I am going to finish Superman off this week as well. So. Oh yeah, Superman Lois. Yeah, I haven't watched uh, this week's episode yet. I was actually watching it earlier. That show has gotten crazy the last few episodes. Big reveals, big characters that we thought were certain people are now other characters. It's pretty crazy. Is it? Is it like uh, Loki and shape shifting? No, not no. <laughs> but it's it's people having powers that you didn't think had powers. Oh, like, um, interesting. So interesting. so for me, I'll. I, probably gonna surprise y'all but i've been watching the euro 2020 soccer tournament oh i've been watching that every day jay yeah. oh okay yeah. yeah it's it's i really like like the daytime sport you can just like have on for like all day That's, long because i'm i'm very surprised justin that you said that. i am too <laughs> i mean i i can probably name or identify maybe 10 players in the world but yeah it is kind of fun to watch like it's uh mm-hmm. in like the very best players especially like in these so I don't, I'm not going to watch premier league or anything like that, but like whenever it's like nation versus nation, I can kind of get into it. It's yeah. easier for me to understand, you know, like, um, and then like the best players are almost like superheroes because they, they stand are. out so much mm-hmm. more than the than, other ones. Yeah. Then yeah. like the sports that I, you know, that I've grown up watching where, I mean, yeah, you know, Tom Brady's better than the average quarterback, but the average quarterback, like Nick Foles can beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like it's unheard of. Yeah. Whereas, like, when you watch, like, Cristiano Ronaldo play, it's like he – it's like a different level. You know, like, it's just uh-huh. – and he had two goals yesterday, by the way, also. So, he was – Yeah. yeah. Listen, then, what happened to a Danish player or Christian Eriksson? Holy shit. That was so uh-huh. scary to hear about. Yeah. And I, I'm – I'm glad that he's, he's stable. He's doing all right. You know, this probably I'd assume is the end of his career. Cause I think with Italy, the Italian team that he plays for, like there's a clause in there that if something happens like, like that, you know, he can't play anymore. I just don't know what that means for the rest of his career. That sucks. Oh man. But he went into cardiac arrest on the field. He did. And he's only 29 years old. I'm like, holy shit. You know, that is awful. You know, I, I'm glad his teammates were there to, you know, kind of shield him from cameras and the rest of the world as, as, you know, paramedics, you know, worked on him. And, and like I said, he's stable, but like, Jesus, that was intense. That was so intense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. definitely. 
Um, Man. There's also another big soccer tournament I've been kind of watching too. Is Copa America is going on, <laughs> which I wasn't even I didn't I didn't realize it was okay, going. Okay, Justin. No, okay. So, so I watched I watched Copa on what was it Monday or Tuesday? I, th- I think it was Monday. Yeah, Monday. What they play again on that? It's on Fox Sports. Fox Sports, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, so I watched Copa on, I guess it was Monday, and then uh, they come back on Thursday. So I got mm-hmm. to see Messi score a goal this week, and that's always cool. Like, I, it is, it's weird, like, because there's so, there's such few scoring, obviously. These are, you know, one nothing, 2 one games at most. Mm-hmm. And it is kind of cool when, like, the, the mega star player scores a goal. So Yeah. I'm all messy all the way. Screw that other dude, Ronaldo. No, no. I know. No, I mean, no, he's no. good. We're, we're, don't we're don't get me wrong. We're about to fight, dude. We're <laughs> about to fight. That's cool. No, I mean, Ronaldo's good. I'm not taking away from his talent. It's just, I, you know, he's team, the best player of, team is shit without him, though, okay? If he's not on that team, like, he can't play for whatever reason, that team is shit. I'm just saying. Well, at least at least Ronaldo's won a championship with his fucking team. You can't That's fair. Argentina. That's fair. I, I, I can't argue with that. I mean, facts are facts, but I, I like Messi. I, the game I watched on Tuesday afternoon, probably the best game I've seen so far was France versus Germany. Germany. Those are like two loaded teams. It should have, it should have been like 5-0, dude. Uh. That's the part about soccer that I don't totally understand. There was a goal that uh, Mbappe, which is one of the big stars. That's, that, Mbappe. Have, that dude is a monster, bro. Like, he is. He yeah. set up a guy for what looked like a perfect goal, and then they called it back for offsides, and they're like, yeah. Offsides, yeah. They showed the video, and they're like, as you can see, his left knee was offsides, and I'm like, <laughs> but his right knee's not like it was like yeah they're running yeah. up the field I, I i don't understand offsides in soccer i don't get it like I, it's kind of the same as football but like yeah in, in a way if any part of your body is over like where the defender is and you're away from it it's offsides yes. it doesn't but what if you matter. just what if you just beat the defender like what if you just run if, past the guy but if you beat him before the ball was passed to you then you're fine yeah. but he did oh. it yeah that's wow. why. Even if his knee's off by like a millimeter, it doesn't fucking matter. Dude, mm-hmm. you know, if soccer was like wide open, just like hockey, those would be much better sports. <laughs> if you could just like reward oh, the people who are faster or whatever, like that. Would, I mean, if I have to save soccer, I will. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. You know. Are, are you going to put a logo in the middle of the pitch to save it? There should be. It would look better for the viewer. It's more visually appealing, okay? Like, I know you can like I, to harp on this. Can if, I tell the story? Yeah, but first off, let me just say, okay. like, if other sports, I mean, if you watch other sports, you notice they have colors and stuff on the field because, like, just green grass is boring. But, yeah, go ahead and tell. Okay, so a couple years ago, uh, a few of us got tickets to see the Manchester uh, Derby here in Houston. Uh, great opportunity for the fact that Manchester United and Manchester City had never played a derby, a derby outside of the U.K., so – We all went to go check it out and Justin and I had this kind of back and forth about whether or not there was a logo in the middle of the pitch. Now, I know Justin played soccer when, you know, you were a wee lad. Um, I never did, but I've been watching soccer because of John and my husband. And, you know, we just kept going back and forth. No, there, because it was covered. I mean, that, that area was covered before the game started. And when it was revealed that there, well, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. We made a bet that, whoever was right would get 50 bucks. Okay. I knew there was not a logo in the middle of the pitch and Justin was adamant. He's like, yes, there is. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Well, once it was revealed, then it was like, well, there should be, there should be a logo in the middle of the field. I'm like, but that wasn't the bet. (laughs) Now, Justin did pay up. He did pay up. I'm going to give him credit where credit is due. But the end of the day, there's just no, you know, logo in the middle of a soccer pitch. That's just what it is. Okay. Then why have a covering? If it's just a green field, just let it be a green field. <laughs> no, because they, they were doing their pre, you know, game ceremonies and, you know, all that other shit. That's why. They don't want, like, regular shoes or regular, you know, people, like, on the field. They want, like, the legits on, on the field. I don't know. Well, okay, so I, I lost the bet, but I should have been right. <laughs> I think your pride was just hurt more than anything. <laughs> I just can't believe how, like, substandard they, they don't mind their fields looking. Like, I mean, just like a green field. Like, I can't imagine, like, the Super Bowl being played on a green field. Like, not, well, like, having team logos and the NFL logo. And, like, there's just stuff you need to see. It looks better. Yeah, but you've like, got to focus on – you've got to focus on the ball and, like, where it is. I mean, you look at a damn, you know, hockey 
a hockey game, you know, that puck is like just a little black little thing, you know. Yeah, like there's stuff all over the ice. There's stuff that all doesn't over make the it ice. easier to see. That doesn't make it easier to see. I don't know. <laughs> we agree to disagree. Fine. So um, I still won. Before this, you did win. I did. Before this goes, it turns into a just an all out soccer podcast, which maybe it will be in the future. <laughs> um, this is a good point to uh, let uh, Brittany explain to everybody. How can people find us on social media? Weigh in on our discussions about who's better, Ronaldo or Messi. Just saying. Uh, you can do that by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Search for The Watchers in the Basement. Be sure to use hashtag Watchers Basement when chatting about us or with us, whatever. Uh, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to give us a like, leave us a comment. We will respond. Spread the word about our little podcast because although we are little, we are also a proud podcast. And I mentioned it before. I'll mention it again. If you're not into video podcasts, you can check us out on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, thanks to anchor.fm. And we appreciate all the views and comments and likes that we've gotten thus far. Let's keep it going, y'all. Let's keep spreading the word about the watchers in the basement. That way we can turn this into our full-time job one day. That would be awesome. Thank you, Brittany. Yeah. So for uh, Brittany, for George, for Frank, this is Justin saying we'll see you next week when we review episode three of Loki. Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs>